Hello, Oddjob Dewey here, and today we have an install of something that's big and heavy and slightly boxy. Not one, but two wall ovens. Actually, it's a double wall oven. And this poor thing's uh, fairly old. You can tell me by the controls up here, having knobs and whatnot, and uh, the stuff working about eh, 644 ish. And so, we're going to be taking this one here out and uh, put a new one in. So the first thing you'll do is, you know, just kind of look it over, see what you got here. You should do a measurement across from here to here, and uh, that will tell you about the standard width. They usually come in 24s, 27s, and 30s. And uh, I won't lie, these things are expensive. And um, best time to buy them is usually around holidays, you know, when they have appliance sales. Maybe look online. Sometimes they ship them to your house for free. And uh, sometimes you can go back to stores where someone had mistakenly measured a uh, 30 and they bought a 27. And it didn't fit, so they brought it back. It's all brand new. It's just out of the carton. But usually they mark them down pretty good. So the first thing I like to do is, even though I know some of the stuff doesn't work up here, is I uh, check the light, so that's on. Maybe I'll try on a knob, see if the thing heats up, to tell you that it's not a breaker that has sprung. But, first thing I do is, well, first thing I do, if you're replacing this, is measure the cutout, which is back in here. So you down this crack here, and uh, you measure the width, and you try to get the, the height up and down to take it in and find something that will fit close to it because let me tell you this job is going to involve some electricity it's going to involve some cabinetry skills it's going to involve some strength mm -hmm. and um yeah so i believe we have a, a new model already selected that should fit the bill and so from here i will go out and check the breaker and make sure it's off so we can safely start work on this one here Another thing is, if you have floor, like this here, a little soft one, uh, some vinyl, linoleum, go ahead and toss down some cardboard to uh, help keeping the uh, floor from getting all marred and cut up. Alright, I'll check that break out and be right back. Alright, so now we're outside here and we got the breaker box open and uh, luckily even though a lot of these aren't marked, you, know, you got a 60, we have a 100 amp. In the middle, seems kind of weird. We've got some other ones up there. There is one marked oven, sloppily written there, 40 amps. And that right there might be exactly what it takes for that oven. Off it goes. Um, breakers for these ovens can go for probably anywhere from 30 to 50 amps, depending on what kinds you have. And um, for a double oven, yeah, 40, 50s. For single ones, probably, you know, 30s, 35. And so we got that thing off, and I will see if the oven lights up or not. All right, so we're back inside. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on an oven here. Bake, open the door. You can see no lights there. I'm gonna stick my hand in here. And, uh, Ah, not getting hot. Up oven, bake. This thing is off. So now we'll get time to um, look at the new one and do some unboxing on it. And I'll get back to you. Alright, so we got some instructions here. So we got um, appliance rating watts there, 240. So if you have less than uh, 4800 watts, 20 amps is fine. If you have 4800 to 7200 watts, 30 amp. If you have uh, 72 to 9600 watts, that's a 40 amp or 50 amp. And so I checked what the new one's rating was, and I believe it was 7.4 kilowatts. So we already have a 40 amp in there, so we're going to still stick with that. And uh, next here, we'll get back to the oven. So we have the old oven there. Mm, right there somewhere. Mm. 
Old oven. And what we'll be working on now is getting the doors out of there. Kind of help release some of the weight on this thing. And so most ovens, the doors are removable. And um, you can remove them basically off the hinges by just opening them up a little bit. And pulling them out. And look at this, this looks a little different. Let's see here. Let's see like this. See some screws down here, and uh, I'll get back to you. Let me get a screw. Remove that. All right. So yes, this here takes a Torx driver to uh, get these little screws out here. Move one like that. Just kind of half, well, almost close like that. So just open a little bit and just pull it right up. And there, got the doors off. Next, for this particular model here, it is held in place. Right there, you can kind of see it. And there you got a uh, screw of Phillips, and it says one, maybe two, three, four, five, six. I have some behind this, but I don't think so. So I'll get a Phillips screw over on that, and undo those, and see if it's ready to be pulled out. All right, so we got the four screws out. There's one here, and above there, right there. Same on the other side. Next we'll do is we'll take out all these racks. And uh, down there it's kind of hard to see, but there is a broiler pan to take out, probably keep for later. And um, this very bottom part, that little strip down there, you see all shiny? Right Ooh, down there. Anyways, that strip, I took the screws away, but it's kind of wedged in between the, the drawer or whatever is below that. So when I start to move this around, it probably just have fallen out. But you know, I checked it. There's a gap up here. You can see, and it's about ready to come out. So I will take out the racks and uh, pop this thing out, and uh, be back. And these things are heavy. They're probably, you know, 300 pounds, maybe, maybe more. I don't know. I can take it though. I'll give you back. All right, so in taking this one here out, we ran into this little problem. You can see the cord is up there. I had to take a, a shelf and a bunch of stuff out of here. And so that there goes to this guy. And the other issue we'll have is the new one. Would you look at that? That's like a little tail that comes out from the bottom of it. And so no way is that gonna fit. fit. Ain't gonna reach it. You're not supposed to put a, you know, another line in there. And so instead I want you to order a, uh, a 3 meter, a 10 foot wire from, uh, from them to probably wire in here. So I'll still remove the old one since I'm halfway there, and then we'll get back to finishing this up sometime later. Alright, so, so here it is, out of its uh, hiding spot there. And um, let's see here, get some light on this. So we got there some pretty sturdy looking boards it looks like. I'll have to double check it. They should hold about, I think it's like 200, 300 pounds for the new one to fit in there. And um, so I'll double check that. And also check to make sure the boards are leveled from left to right and front to back. And then uh, 
up here as I was unwiring it, found a little surprise. There's uh, two reds and two blacks come out of the wall, and two whites. And so that really means that this circuit, when I turn the breaker on, one black will be hot, one red will be hot, and the other two will be Right, I don't know what happened there, but that means that the, uh, the pair of red and black will be hot, and a pair won't, and then uh, a white, neutral. And so, found out already what this does, it branches over and goes to the electric cooktop. So, I'll have to rewire those up together temporarily if they want to use the cooktop while the oven's waiting for a new cord. Because all this one here hooks in the middle. Hmm. If I can get it here. There we go. Hooks in the middle of the oven. And it's fairly long. The other one's not. So, this one here is old, not dated. It's going to go away. It's heavy. But we have help here in the form of hand truck. Star treatment on it. You know, dolly, hand truck, furniture dolly, do what you can. These things here, both the old one and the new one, should be trucked from the sides, not the front or the back. Another word of caution are these things right here. That's right where the doors go. Um, these I don't care about, but the new ones you want to be careful because you could accidentally have something tap into this here and make it spring back in to the uh, framework there. And uh, this one here, like I said, we're throwing it away, so I don't care. But the new one, if it's uh, has some enamel or something, I don't want to chip it up and mess it up. So you don't want to bump that. So I'm going to hand truck this thing out of here and uh, figure out something to do the cord. All right, well, uh, look at that. So what we have here is the back. There's a panel here, right there, that we took off from the back of this monster. And down at the very bottom, you can see the hole right down there. That's where the old power supply went, came from. When I say old, I mean brand new on this machine. But the problem is that's probably about four foot long, and we needed more. So, I took that out there, and I went to the... Uh, the, uh, actually, I called up the, the company, because they have an, a longer version. You don't do an extended wire to this thing. You have to actually have a longer cord. And so, the longer cord was 10 foot, and it would have cost, oh, I think $82 at the time. And so that's a little bit high in my mind. So, I actually went to the um, hardware store in town, and I was able to get this right here. Yeah, see a whole lot of sneaky sneaky here. Some armored cabling. And to go with that, we've got some wires. We've got the red. We've got the white. We've got the black. And we've got the green in there. And so, what we're going to do is make our own cord. And the supplies I bought cost $25 or so versus um, $82. And I measured, and 10 foot would have been like probably way too much. And so I decided to go on an 8 foot. So for me to get an 8 foot, it's 8 foot of this armored cable and a 9 foot piece of the wire. And that will give me the 8 feet I need plus the, um, you know, plus what I need to have actually the wire to come out and cut off and stuff and wire this thing up. So let's see here. Back up here, earthquake. Alright, so to start this little gig, what I did was I took from the old flexible one, I took these uh, grommets out. You know, they're probably cheap, but uh, they go in the end of your tube. This will keep your wire from, um, you know, cutting anyone. In theory, basically cutting the cord. The wires and then what you do she'll take it and put in through here let's see here do it right and like so and there we go and like so okay then we'll take the wiring and we'll run it down the rabbit hole, so to say, and just feed it all the way through to the other end. 
Trust me, I'm feeling it. Mm -hmm. It probably helps to keep this all put together. <laughs> Got a little kink here. So we can ever get it or something. Uh-huh. Oh, uh oh, it's attacking me. Uh, uh. And come on, sneaky. Got a whole half foot to go. Mm. Uh. Let's see where it's held up at here. Look, it's right there at the end. Ah, oh, there it is. All right, so we got our uh, cable through, like so, and uh, it's the outside. And then what we want to do is we'll put this part here back on. This is the part that actually goes up the bottom part, right here, up the bottom part of that hole down the bottom of the range. So. Zoom out a little bit here so I can see. This little guy here actually comes undone. Wire goes in through. And put this in like so. And you shove this assembly all up in there. And they go around. Close the door. There we go. Let me put the screw back through here. And give it some of this treatment here. <laughs> All right. Pleasure to the guys, guys' day going out there pretty good. Well, let me tell you, mine's going pretty crazy here. So, get this thing tight. And next what we'll do is we will attach, we'll strip off these parts here and crimp on some new eyelets here to um, bolt the machine. All right, so I got the eyes, the ends here with the eyelets, and so what you do is you get some wire strippers like so, right there. Or just see, there's different gauges. This here's a ten gauge wire, which is the top, and so you just uh, put it in there, probably about, I think it'll take about a quarter of an inch off, like that, and you pinch down, and it cuts it, and you pull it off. See, and then you got your wire. Like so, and then what you do, uh, pull that off, and you get the eyelet, which uh, make sure this here is the, the right diameter of those bolts that goes in the, the oven, nice thick one, and you slide in the back here, and it uh, should come out the front, like about so, okay, and then you get the Strippers again, and they have uh, different sizes here. You know, this is a red coloring uh, for 10 to 12 wire. You use this bottom one here, and so you just kind of get over it like this. I'm keeping the wire in the middle, and give it a good crimping. Now, if you get down some, you both hands. And then you just want to slightly give it a little pull, make sure it's not going to come undone, and give it a better pull, make sure it's in there. So that's tight, and that's good to go now. Make sure I didn't bust the plastic around it, nope. And um, 
Okay, so I'm going to do the other four, three, just kidding, three, and uh, we're ready to install this cable, the new cable, into the oven. Alright, so we got our little cable here made. We got our uh, back of the range here lit up so everyone can see. And so what we got to do now is we'll put these wires up underneath into the hole here. And uh, when you work around sheet metal, you gotta watch out because it can be a little sharp. I haven't cut myself yet on this project, but uh, there's still time. Get these two up in here. And this one up here. And one more. Okay, trying to get the wires cut, and now this particular thing down here, actually, I call it cheap, but it really just presses up in there, locks it in place, kind of a pain to get out when you want to redo stuff. Other ones, you know, they have the screw things on, so we'll just try to pop this right up in there. There. That it is in. Now then, we have this mess here, so let's see, I already know that black goes, this wire comes out here, because it doesn't have to be tied in with anything, black goes off to the left side, and green needs to go over yonder here, mm -hmm. and then we got here, white goes in the middle, and then red. So I'm just going to head and uh, put this down in here. Not your white. Black. Oops. I'm going to put this back on the way I took it off. So it's, um, I'll probably see it way back in here. But it's actually a black. Let's see here. This right here, you got this black wire here which is on first. Then you got the black wire coming up from your whip. Then you have this black wire going on top. With me so far? And then you got this uh, 3 8 nut guy that goes on. And we'll tighten that all up. And now, the thing about tightening this stuff up, you want snug. You don't want to be able to move it around. But you don't need to use your ogre strength on this. You know, there's, it's on a, a plastic bus here. You don't really want to crack the plastic bus. So I got it pretty snug now. Let's do a little one, two. Mm -hmm. And that's good enough for that. And then uh, I'll continue with the other wires. The only one else that's different here is you got your ground and the ground here. So your ground will go down there, and yeah, I said I had an extra one. Ground's green, red. Let me flip them around here. Red will go like so. Probably hard to see this, and this red's actually kind of pinkish. That's fine. Going like so. Another. Reach nut to this guy here. And so this is a 240 appliance, which means you have two hot, which is the red and black, and one common or neutral, and you got a ground. So basically, the 240 means 120 black, 120 red. Okay, this all snugged up and happy. Uh -huh. Once again, tight, but not crushing. Okay, now the green one 
is actually this special green screw that you can't see because I just got to focus. Special green screw. There it is. And that will go beep, 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 boop, right down that hole to the cabinet. And uh, it's, a, it's a Phillips or a quarter inch nut driver. And so I like to use the nut driver on these guys just so I don't strip out the Phillips. And uh, it goes off something like this. You got your two greens, put them together, and Oh, stretch it over here. Tight, tight, tight. And these vents down here are probably more like an air intake than a heat coming out of them. There you go, tighten that one there. I can fish some extra slack out of that, yeah. And let's see, one less left here. Got that in, that one there, and uh, this guy here. So we'll get this thing here tightened up, and hopefully we'll be glad that we saved uh, quite a bit of money making our own cord here. It's really not that hard. It's a little bit hard to find maybe some of the connectors, but uh, in this case, I actually had some in my toolbox. These red ones here. That's all snug back here. That was there's that right there, and then uh, next we'll do. Let's kind of tuck this guy back in like so, and we'll come on the ah the dangerous part here. The one dangerous part is the sheet metal. Zoom it back here. Right. And for this picture, one there's a couple of notches. Top. Make sure I don't want to pinch any wires, that'd be a no no. So, you got this kind of a uh, tongue and groove thing going in here, kind of slips in there, this little tongue part on both sides, and the rest of it just kind of smashes down on the machine. It's right there. Now, and uh, looks like, yeah, this top part. Slides in two. In and down. Oops. Oh. This is where you cut a finger or something. Let's go down here. Got a nice handful of these little screws here to put in after we get this thing put in. Put in, put in. Make sure nothing's rubbing up here. You don't want to, you know, shave any insulation off these wires. They're all good still. Okay.
All right. I take a look so what's who's going on. That says on the outside, that says on the inside. This right here needs to come up and out. All right, it's going to be boring. So uh, I'll get back to you after I get it bigger. There, much better. Got that back on. Uh, trust me, it's on there. And um, now we're going to take the, uh, the doors off this one here. So what you do on this one is you open them up, and there's this little deal here that comes out. Um, let's see here. Get something in there. Arrgh. Fingernail. So you get that out. Like so. And you bring it down. Hmm. There. Alright, no no blood. Okay, so you like that. And then uh now also take out all the stuff from the inside, all the racks, all the plastic. But uh let's see here. Get that done like that. And now the door should just lift off. Actually it goes back to that joint where you um, drop that piece of metal down. And yeah. and so now it's on both sides down. And so this here should lift up just about to here where it kind of locks in place. And you can pull up the door up. You can see the whole hinge comes off on this one. And carefully set it somewhere off camera in case you drop it and break it. No one sees it. Alright. The bottom ones more than likely the exact same thing. Yep. So I'll get to that and um, empty it out. Alright, look familiar? That's right, that's what the oven sets on inside the cupboard. That thing, that thing over here. And now, uh, excuse the poor lighting, but um, this is where things can get interesting. So, we got this right here. Let's say you want to bake a cake or something that's, you know, levels. You take a level here, and you put it across these here boards. Now, if you look real closely to the middle, by Jove, that is pretty good level from uh, left to right. Now we want to see a front to back. And so we'll uh, take this thing here, give it a little spin here, make sure it's not any kind of screw heads or nothing, keep it in line, and then uh, we'll check the level on this. And if you zoom in, you could see that that bubble is way to the right. That's horrible. So um, I'll lift this side a little bit and see where it starts to level out. Oops. Okay, right about there it's leveling out. It's hard to see, but you can see right there we got about a whole inch, I'd say. So chances are either this thing fell down an inch, which I kind of doubt it because it has some strong brackets there. They aren't broken. Or something else happened. So from what I can tell though, looking around, yep, these boards that hold this heavy wall oven um, are just into the that back heavy duty 2x4 which is into the wall quite possibly a stud from where you can see the uh, drywall painting right there to this front messed up piece here which uh... shine some light out there you can see it's kind of splitting at the seams there and so what I propose to do is I think I will take out this screw here and this one here likewise for the other side 
and cut me some 4x4 four four blocks. I'll, uh, I'll double check the measurements though first, but um, I'll measure this part here. And so right there is looking about uh, oh, three and a half, three, three and three quarters maybe. Yeah, about three and a half there. And so if I want to do an inch, I'll do a four and a half, four and a quarter maybe. And uh, first though, I will double measure my cutout height from here all the way up to up there, the edge. So I'll double measure that and then I'll decide on if I'm going to raise this front lip or lower that back board there to make this level. Um, the old one didn't seem to have that much of a problem but chances are it's because the thing was held in with like four screws and the new one is going to be held with two at the top, two little small ones believe it or not. So we definitely want to make this sitting on a shelf by itself level and I'm a big fan of raising the front and putting some extra blocks underneath here to keep that supported. And um, yeah, so I'll continue and do a little bit of a cabinetry magic here and see what happens. Alright, so we're kind of in luck. This one down here, after we took out the screws and lifted it a bit, actually had a hole right here. So we used that one and the one on the other side, and so now it fits pretty good. Um, next thing we do is drill out, oh, not brick stuff, we need to drill out the um, next hole. Because, uh, dun, 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 dun. because, um, you know, the wood's kind of hard, you don't want to have it split. So, do about an inch pilot hole. Or so. And put the uh, screw back in. Hmm. Do a little bit of do a little bit of that. Let the machine do the work here. Into the work, and it's still not in. Hmm. Maybe I didn't do an inch. Maybe it's an inch and a quarter. Easy to remedy. Remedy this here. Let's see here. Flip it around. Mm-hmm. And here you thought it'd just be like a cable, you know, pull the old wall oven out, put the new one in, redo the wiring. Yeah. Big job, let me tell you. Put this over here for right now. All right. 
Now that's over with. I'll do the same to the other side, only hopefully smoother. And um, then what I'll do here is get my measurement. Now there's a bit of a shelf or so down here on the bottom. And so what I'll do is measure back here a bit. I got four and a half inches. All right, up here in the front, I got four and a half inches. And so what I'll do is cut a two by four or four by four post if I got some. And not so much place it up here, which is over the overhang, you know, down here, but more back so it's over the, uh, you know, stud of the base. And that should give it some good support. All right, let me finish up this carpentry work and we'll get back to uh, doing something else. All right, so I'm back from the lab and that didn't take too long. And what I bring with me? A couple of these here. Yeah, wooden blocks. So I measured uh, four and a half inches from the bottom here to underneath this board. And uh, I cut this four and a sixteen inch, four and a half with a sixteen inch missing. Just so it's slide under there easier. We're playing for support. Now next what we'll do is this bottom board looks to be not really plywood. It's probably just a particle board. Um, that's right down here, some particle board. So what I'll do is I'll take a measurement from underneath here. You see? So I got about six inches from uh, the front of this thing to where there is a wooden stud that goes to the floor. So I will measure and slide these guys here. about five right in here you get it kind of centered up and that should be fine yep and I'll do it to the other side too and this way here if anything well I shouldn't say if anything if it gets a little heavy and decides to uh, drop then um, we'll be taken care of. Mm. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Ah. Don't check these two. Yeah, there we go. It's a better fit. Alright, just get centered right underneath that board there and uh, recenter this one here. Mm -hmm. Alright, so when we add the weight to this thing and it sells just maybe a fraction of an inch, actually a fraction of a sixteenth, it's going to support the wind blocks will support the top part and the whole thing should be supported. And it should be great and glorious. And I think we're done with the cupboard tree work, except for there might be one little bitty part to do, and that is with these sides. This so across here, run about 24 and 3 quarters. I think at the top it's more like, or almost around 24, just because this cabinet has a little bit of uh, issues on the bottom. And, meh. Yeah. So, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go ahead and try to put this thing in there, see what it fits. Or if the cutout is actually the real cutout. I think they asked for what, a 24 and 7 eighths minimum, to like 25 and a quarter. If it is, then I will mark things and, um, and make some adjustments. So, let me see if I can get off the floor, and I'll get right back to you guys. Alright, so as you can see, it's... Uh, it's still not in, you see that? Gaping hole there. Sure, the wire's up there. Glad we got that one. Um, 
And so what do we have here? So this right here in the instructions shows the uh, height, which is represented by H, and the width by F. Now the height on here, if you come down to the bottom, we got um, a minimum of 48 and 7 eighths by 49 and 5 eighths. Guess what? I remeasured the height and we come in at 49. So in theory, we should be right. Well, good. Now the width here, which is donated by F up here, is, uh, is uh, you know, a minimum of 24 and 7 eighths by 25 and a quarter. And guess what we got there? We got like 24 and a half. 24 and a half from, from here all the way to there. So, we have to do some math. So if we do our 20, well, let's see if I can figure this out now, on my own. 24.5. And we take away, let's say we give it a little bit here. Um, so we got 24 and 7 eighths to 25 and a quarter. Let's go with 25. 25 and take it away, 24, 1, that should be half an inch. And now, the tricky part is, yes you could cut half an inch off of one side, but what you should do is actually divide this by 2, divide by 2, which will make you equal um, 0.25 or for you fraction people out there 1 over uh, 4 quarter inch so in theory if I cut off a quarter inch from both of the sides on this thing here right there and over there this thing should fit in there perfect or close enough uh, if my math is wrong tell me below of course, by the time you get this, I'll probably figure out my math is wrong. Anyhow, uh, let me get back to cutting now. Okay, as you can kind of see there, I've been uh, sawing, you know, right up, uh, right up here. And I just got a little bit more to go. Um, so let me set you back down here. And I'll finish up my sawing of that, uh, about a, almost a quarter inch off. There. Whew. So now, we got, um, this right here, strip cut off. You can see it's, uh, you know, just about a quarter inch or so from the uh, the, the length of it there. And uh, you know, handsaw, um, what have you, whatever you, you can find maybe. Um, there's different ways to, whoa, hey, what's that? Oh, that little thing. Um, all right, so maybe I didn't cut it all by hand. This here's a little uh, circular saw there, great for doing this carpentry work. And so I was able to cut down a quarter off that size there. Now what I'll do is I will remeasure the gap and adjust from there. Alrighty, so that right there is not pretty, but as you can see there, we made some sawdust all over the place. Little piles of it. So what that means is now we take time out to vacuum. Vacuum this mess up here, vacuum the side of the range, hopefully you didn't get any slightest in there. If you did, it'll burn off, don't worry. Um, just a little, a little bit more smokier than normal. And we, we got some of the side there kind of cut out and butchered. And uh, this side here is done right. And uh, in theory, this should fit. So I'm going to vacuum it up and see if it fits. I'll be right back after I get something to clean this up. Oh, and a word about sawing too. Now, Using a handsaw, you might not want to, but you still might want some glasses. But uh, 
what I use for the power saw down there is a, a face shield. See that there? It covers my whole face. Because let me tell you, I'm ravishing. And I want to keep it that way. So, face shield protects more just dries. Doesn't protect your lungs though, so try to get your area well vented. Or maybe even a little, uh, you know, a little um, breath mask or something. Regular or something like that. Alright, clean up and uh, hook up. Or install. Whatever. Okay, Whatever. so we're getting down to it here, and uh, we've got the behemoth in. And now we're getting ready to put the anti-tip screws in. And uh, let me tell you folks, something's wrong here when uh, you have... Let's see here. This plunk, is the, uh, the new one. Look at that. Maybe a half inch long, three quarters. And for the old one, we used to have this one. Yes, I actually had four of these, and the new one just has two of these little bitty ones, and it's going to be hard to see, but they go up here in this little hole. You make sure your uh, molding here is flush against the cupboard. And what I'm going to do with this is I got the tiniest little drill bit here I could find. And then we'll just try to drill a pilot hole. Hmm. Yeah, like that before I snap my little dribble a bit off because uh really this is tough tough angle let's see here who designed this should be taken out and forced to install this for everybody else in the world You gotta put pressure on it. If you got uh, you got yourself some oak covers, which is hard wood. You got yourself this little screw, which has some teeth on it, but not a whole lot. And then you got this uh, no clearance up here to put your hands or knuckles or anything. So you're basically putting a screw over like this. I'm having to twist it very so carefully. This is what you'd call getting on the last nerve, probably. <clears throat> and another thing is these screws, they're probably making aluminum or something. They're uh, easy to strip out, so I know because I already got the other side done. <clears throat> uh, okay, almost. Probably another eighth of an inch or so. <clears throat> Hope I don't snap the head off. Um, hmm, one more slight turn might snug this puppy up. Uh. All right, well, I don't think it's going to come out, just because of how good I got it wedged in there. But you don't want the door, when the doors are back on, you don't want the doors, you know, kind of been hitting that. So... Now here's what we got here. Yeah, not too bad there. It's in the cupboard, pretty good and flush. And uh, next I'll work on taking some uh, soft cloth and wipe any dust inside. And uh, working on that up there. Ah. So we'll go upstairs after I uh, get some more cleanup right, done. So we're back up here, and um, we're gonna start out by. Ooh, doing the tester thing on it here. Make sure nothing goes sparky sparky. Let's see, I'll do a neutral. Nothing, 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 nothing. No 240. <sighs> okay, so this is all should be grounded on, I mean, off, not grounded. And uh, set that aside for now. Then I'll touch my finger. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, give you guys a little twist. Hmm. Let's see now. I'll do a little visual inspection. 
make sure none of these got cut. This one here feels like it has a little something on it, but uh, just a scrape. Nothing, and nothing, and nothing. Alright. So then, I like to give you a little twist. Give them back to their normal looking ways. Mm -hmm. Reds look fine. Might need a little more twist there. So now, in theory, what we have is one red and one black are hot if you turn the brake wrong. And one white goes back to it. Now another red, another black, goes over to the cooktop I found out over the yonder. And so we've got to make sure we hook these all up, plus add these. So on this thing here, we have uh, this thing again. And I'm going to give this a little tightness there. Mm -hmm. And show what I'm doing here in a minute. Here. Alrighty. So, this thing here, and uh, let's go off the lighting. I don't think I'm getting better in here for lighting. Is that better? Ooh, not really. Anyways, we got this thing here, and um, ta da! And so the wire's gonna go like this. Up through here, in there, and this guy here comes in like that. This guy here goes in like this, and comes back down. And you put screws through here on both sides. And um, let me show you here. <laughs> All right, so screws like that on both sides, and once you know it's old, so it's slotted. I'll just do this real quick off camera. Trust that I'm still working. Bouncing on a ladder. Tighten this thing down to crushing. And then... There. Make sure it's tight. There, see? Nice. Next we'll deal with the other side. Okay, so there's great long uh, connectors here. I don't need them that long, so I'm going to snip them off back here somewhere. I turn like this. I don't know if you can see this or not, but let's get to like you can. Alright. So got that there off. And then we'll take the uh, rippers here. Yeah, it looks like most of them have well three quarters of an inch. So we do our our red. Our black. Our uh, 
white. Oops, not there. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, the green ground. There. Got that like so. Now we just gotta combine them together. So, let me look back over here. Of course, I have no idea how clear that was or not. And let's see what we've got in here. We've got something weird in here. What is this? Yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll do the. We'll do the the white and the green together. This is a pretty, a pretty tough, uh, not tough, this is a very important part here, is to get your, your wires all twisted up together so they're all friends. And uh, sometimes I like to do a good bend on these to separate them. Let's see here. Just a slider bit. So, here we go. Mm. This guy here, get a little straight into him. Take a look at it. Me, yeah. seems okay. Other guy, great. Now then, here we go. We'll twist these guys together. Yep, that's about how it goes. Which means ain't going. So, um, hmm. think about wires you bend too much, and guess what? You break. You don't want no broken wires up in here. Now then. Okay. up here. Uh, 
No, it doesn't look good at all, does it? I hate these things. It's probably those are pressing things somewhere you can use. No. Ugh. Tighten these down more. And these two I really would like to get to together. Quit faking you too. Mm. I like the bane everyone's electrical job. What you want is a real tight twist on these guys without snapping anything off. And what I'm getting uh, is something not quite what I want. There. That's good. on the other side here. This one's that tight, so it doesn't fall apart. It doesn't undo itself, pulling every little wire. Mm, that's tight. Whew. All right, the repeat. back there is. And there, all better. So we got the little snaky slack there going down the bottom there. And uh, now we're ready to uh, do something else with this thing. Uh, oh, that's right. Here, let me grab this. I'm gonna come back down here. Oh, I'm always on the ground with this job. Alright, so here we have something very important to do. This is the bottom trim to make it look good and to save you from death and injury or something. And so there's two holes, look like they're on the very bottom, like right down under here. That this trim goes in. Uh, hmm. Boom, boom. 
Okay, it looks like it goes like that. It doesn't really say in the instructions which way it goes, but I'm thinking... You have a hole here, and a hole down there. So this goes like in here somehow. And, ah, oh, this is a pain. Does that look right? That does look right. Fortunately, their side say no. You ain't doing that. This side here, if you get it in like that. And the other one doesn't want to go in. Oh. So maybe it doesn't go that way. And then it goes like this. Hmm. It does look like that. I like that. Um. Hmm. All right. I'm gonna fangle this out and get back to you. Okay. So we got the bottom guard on. Right down there. Hmm. Can't see. Let's miss down there. And then uh. Let a door on. Alright, so we want to make sure to take off all the, the plastic, like that blue stuff there. And I'll get the other door and put that on. And then we'll uh, flip the breaker on. Got like a wall, wall oven and a wall oven. It's hard to see, but a double black wall oven. We got some temperature on. Uh, got some stuff there going on. Hmm. Mighty fine fan up here blowing the uh, hot air from the control panel. Let's see if it's hot. Yep, yeah, it's feeling hot in there. Mm, stinky too. Why it's stinky? Because um, it has to burn some oil, shipping and all stuff like that. So what you're supposed to do actually is after you get this thing hooked up, you're supposed to let it run for they said in the book, what, half an hour at 400 degrees, and it might as well throw the racks in there too. And that, that kind of breaks it in, burns off the, the stink. And uh, what you need to do is turn on something like your vent fan, maybe open some doors and windows to get the smell out. And uh, otherwise, this looks um, good. Mm. Just kidding. And uh, yeah, so, uh, whew, I tell you, double wall oven, pain. That little board right in there, as you can probably see now, I'll uh, tack down to the bottom here and, and cover up that hole that's down there. Lay out some finishing nails. And basically, this is it. New double wall oven. Nice. Uh, Pain to install though. Everything that could have gone wrong just about did on this one. And, uh, you know, like this video if you would, right? If you're if you're still with me here, and uh, thanks for watching. Remember, use your eye protection to protect your eyes, and remember to cut twice, measure once, and uh, math. Math is helpful. Thanks for watching again. Hot job doer out.